All right, I'm just going to walk you through the Unit 1 exam review and you can use this to review for the Unit 1 summative exam and do a little bit of your own work to research and you should be in great shape. This will be short and sweet but you can replay it and pause it whenever you need to and review this material. So the four theories democracy will definitely be covered. The traditional theory about majority rule and minority rights, pluralism, remember compromise for that, elite theory, remember elite and wealthy for that, Hyperpluralism, remember the, the term gridlock that's associated with that. Put, uh, the policy making cycle starts with issues um, through linkage institutions, and remember you check who those linkage institutions are, going to creation of the policy agenda, then to public policy being created, and then reviewed and starting the cycle all over again. You also have the enlightenment political theories of Thomas Hobbes, that people are in a constant state of conflict, government is necessary to give people peace and security, and they have to surrender some of those rights to create some order. John Lon takes it further. Locke says that governments are created among naturally free people as part of the social contract, and that rulers de derive their authority from the consent of the governed, and that's used by Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence. Rousseau talks about the social contract, and actually his documents call the social contract, and focuses on survival and protecting your, your things in your lives, otherwise um, uh, bad things will happen to you, and that's the need for government. He also says that people have a social responsibility and a duty to be involved in their government or democracy and won't work. You also have to be aware of the uh, Articles of Confederation and the Constitution, of course. Um, remember that the big weaknesses to the Articles of Confederation were no executive branch, a lack of control of interstate commerce, no power to tax, um, couldn't create an army and a navy without the help of the states. And if they wanted to re re amend the uh, articles, it took 13 states to do so. Uh, and the states were very powerful because each state got one vote. The Constitutional Convention then was uh, ha held to um, review the articles and the weaknesses of that do document. And of course, they needed a new plan called the Constitution, of course. The New Jersey plan has equal representation as part of it. Virginia plan was based on population. Um, the Connecticut Compromise took one of each of those ideas and created a two-house Congress or a bicameral legislature, one based on population, one based on representation, equal representation, so the House and the Senate. And then once population was determined to be an issue for representation, the three-fifths compromise was necessary because they didn't know how to count slaves. And so the compromise created um, where you could count three in your population for every five slaves that you owned. Um, you're going to have to walk through the articles of the Constitution and have a general idea of the main idea. So Article 1 is legislative or Congress, number 2 is the executive, and the third article is about the judicial, and then know the main ideas for Articles 4, 5, 6, and 7. Um, and then um, main principles of the Constitution, there are uh, six of those, popular sovereignty, where people give you the power for government. Federalism is the split of power between the national and state governments. And the separation of those powers within the national governments. Courts have the power to declare war and actions of Congress and the President is unconstitutional. And then limited government. And that just simply says that the Constitution limits the power of the government. It doesn't expand it. It says these are the powers and only these powers. And we also have the functions of government, and you can review these in Hippocampus, and that's probably a good strategy just to go back and look at those Hippocampus lessons. But government functions, we have six of them, protect citizens, maintain order, provide public goods and services, socialization of youth, creating healthy economies, and then the ability to levy taxes, because you know you can't have a government without money, right? Forms of government, dictatorships, oligarchies, monarchies, representative monarchies, and democracies, you don't need to know the difference between those um, five forms of government. And then in democracy, the difference between direct or town hall government and indirect, which is where you elect your representative uh, or you create a republic where those folks represent you. Uh, then a few other brief notes about the Constitution. Remember that it's short, it has little detail, so it can be flexible to meet the needs of the country uh, over the 200 and some odd years and who knows how much longer. And then enumerated powers, the difference between enumerated and implied. The enumerated are the specific powers listed, like declaring war, levying taxes, and ratifying treaties, whereas the implied powers are just considered necessary and proper. We really don't know exactly what that means. And it's, it expands or elasticizes, or they call it the elastic clause, because it gives Congress more power. That's up to the judicial branch to determine if they overstep their boundaries or not. 
Then the last slide talks about, you know, uh, some of the basics of the Constitution. Uh, James Madison as the father, creator of the Constitution and the idea of federalism. And of course, those who wanted the Constitution were Federalists, and John J. Alexander Hamilton and James Madison uh, wrote documents called the Federalist Papers to convince the delegates to vote for the ratification of the Constitution. Anti-Federalists were against the Constitution because they were afraid it gave too much power to the federal government. And a Bill of Rights was then created to compromise or name those powers or rights that were protected for individuals and um, convince the Anti-Federalists to support the Constitution. And then finally we need to realize that the Supremacy Clause simply says that the powers given to the federal government by the Constitution are supreme. If those powers are not given to the federal government, then they are reserved to the states, as we know from the Tenth Amendment in the Bill of Rights. So take your time and review these. I just flew right through them, but you can keep replaying this over and over. You can pause the video and watch it, um, and then review it, making sure you can also review things in your textbook uh, to support this. It's also, again, a good idea to look at hippocampus lessons and the notes that you took because you may use those notes when you take the exam. Good luck.